Welcome to SVG TV News for Thursday, July 18, 2019. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. All members of Parliament have a duty to be on time for the sitting of the House. This was made clear by Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves at the start of today's session of Parliament. The Prime Minister moved for an early suspension of the House after the late arrival of the Deputy Speaker Carlos James, resulting in none of the day's business being addressed. Senator James, who also serves as Deputy Speaker of the House, arrived around 30 minutes after the scheduled start of the day's proceedings. PM Gonsalves said it is important for members who cannot get to the House on time for the start of its sitting to share that information with their leader. But in, in view of the late start, I want to move a suspension of this House until next week, Thursday. Mr. Speaker, I want to indicate to all honorable members that it is the duty of all honorable members to be here at the appointed time. And if they can't be here at the appointed time, to indicate to their leader so that the leader can indicate to the House. That's how we share information. We know sometimes a professional might be at a court Somebody might be, a minister might be held up with a particular appointment, but this is the way we have done it, always in the past. The Prime Minister took the opportunity to speak strongly against undiscipline and tardiness by members of Parliament. The public to join me so that we don't condone lateness and ill-discipline and that we must share information if for one reason or another we are one or more is going to be late. Every single member of this house is important. That's why we are here. Mr. Speaker, we can, we can start earlier on Monday, oh, sorry, on Thursday. We have enough time to put our affairs in order. Accordingly, I beg to move that this honorable house do stand suspended until Thursday the 25th at 9 a.m. The parliamentary session is expected to reconvene next Thursday, July 25th at 9 a.m. As part of SVG's 40th anniversary of independence, a 40-member committee has been set up to execute programs to celebrate this milestone. In an interview with SVG TV News, coordinator of the committee, Elvis Charles, give an insight into the program of activities, which will include the launch of the independence activities at an event dubbed Renewal at 40. This event takes place on Saturday, July 20th at the SVG Community College, beginning at 6 p.m. At 40, this launch is a family event, really, with a cultural flair. So that's the reason why we are inviting all the families to come along, bring the little kids, refreshments would be on sale, everything would be put in place to make any family comfortable. We have performances from the Vibrating Skakes. We all, I always refer to him as one of the, the fathers of independence. His song, Our Nation is Born, that resonates throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines and in the diaspora. The Prime Minister, Dr. The Honorable Ralph E. Gonzalez is going to do the feature address where he would educate Vincentians more, give a, a more in-depth view as to what Renewal at 40 is all about. And I guess that many people would, would attend to hear him. The internationally acclaimed Melissesby Brothers will perform at Saturday's launch event. And they told our news team it means a lot to them to be back in SVG to be part of such an important event. I'm just really excited just when that moment happens and we just love, we just love doing, we just love being a part in, of, of um, events that are held in St. Vincent and we love supporting St. Vincent as well and coming and doing things like this. It's where our parents are from and we just believe that when, whenever we come to St. Vincent we always have a big connection because um, St. Vincent is like our home. It's where our history is from, right? So that's why we always love doing things for St. Vincent. Whenever, what month, what day, we'll just always come to St. Vincent. Place, it's a small place, but 
great things are always coming out of here um, and it's it's just it's just like us our parents are from this small island but they were able to support us and we've done a lot of great things so we always remember that it doesn't matter what place you come from St. Vin Vincent is a small island but it gave way to great great three great successes the brothers will perform one of Alston Beckett Cyrus's songs at the event and they give us a taste of what patrons can expect. When I say love is the answer, you're gonna you're gonna stay with me. So it kinda goes like 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 this. South Africa and then you go, Love is the answer and then I go I call it another country America. Love is the answer. Nicaragua, love is the answer. South Africa, love is the only answer. St. Vincent, love is the answer. SVG will observe its 40th anniversary of independence on October 27th, 2019. Thousands of the nation's youth will benefit from skills training in various areas over the next three years. So says Senior Education Officer Nicholas Parks Brown, who said that it is time to celebrate the work of those who have already completed these skills training programs and encourage those who will undergo similar training. Sparks Brown was at the time speaking at an exhibition held earlier today in celebration of World Skills Day, observed on July 15th. The senior education officer used the opportunity to speak on the importance of skills training, especially in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Skills are essential. They are an imperative to today's world. So everybody should get involved in skills. It's great to have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, but it's also very essential to engage in skills training and certification. Over 2,000 persons between the age group 15 to 30 are expected to be trained under the SKY program. Additionally, 1,000 persons between the age group 17 to 45 will be trained under the Youth and Adult Training Program. Persons have been encouraged to register for this program, which is currently open for intake. Right now, a very popular program is the YAID program. That's under the World Bank. And that program is 12 weeks for unemployed youths between the ages of 17 and 45. So that also should be something that youths in St. Vincent should, would want to take the opportunity to exploit. The persons who had their projects on display at the exhibition today were from the Camden Park Technical Institute, the Barley Technical Institute, and the Adult and Continuing Education Program. Some of these persons shared their success stories with our news team on how they are now using their skills to better their lives. Basically, this project is about five methods of controlling a light. Here we have our photo cell. This one is our motion sensor. This is our regular hat switch that does be in homes, offices. And this is our dimmer switch and our laser switch remote. Well, so far, and what I have learned, I plan on taking it and use it in the future to better my skills. Well, at first it wasn't easy. The road is not, it's never easy. But through perseverance and help from teachers, I got to um, new ideas and so forth. Okay. I used to just be at home before attending the technical institute. But from attending there and getting ideas, I decided to start my own business. So I was tired of making drinks and then I said, nobody usually do vegetable punch cream. How about trying the pumpkin? And I tried the pumpkin and it's been selling everything. Well, I always with adult education. So um, my zona coordinator, portable program, right? Basically, I'm doing display right now. Fishing is an important livelihood which ensures food security and reduces this country's dependence on foreign goods and several young persons here are learning more about this important industry. This through the annual summer program hosted by the Fisheries Division designed to sensitize participants on the marine environment, climate change and the fishing industry. Today the participants were at Seafront in close proximity to Kingston Fish Market learning fish catching and filleting techniques. Speaking with SVG TV News, Extension Officer with the Fisheries Division, Irvin Joseph, said the program also allows participants to see firsthand the impact climate change has both on land and at sea. 
We're teaching the children that there's a good career in fisheries. So we try to highlight the areas and the different jobs available in fisheries and the benefits. We also teaching them safety at sea and with climate change impacting the environment we took them to the Montreal Gardens to show them the watershed and then we took them straight down to the Brighton Salt Pond area to show them the effects of climate change and today we're showing them teaching them how to fish and get them to get the mindset of being a fisher. Joseph said the ocean space has tremendous potential for a livelihood and the program serves to highlight these opportunities in a fun environment. People tend to look at fishers as like nobody more or less. So we're kind of trying to change that mindset. So we're targeting the young ones so as they come up they can probably change that. Yes, it's, it's an annual event. So right now, as you can see, the kids are really excited and they didn't even know about some of the jobs available in the fishing industry until this program we enlightened some of those. Like you can have like biologists, a lot, a lot of different areas in, we highlighted in the program. So, Well, we would have different sessions and we show them the different fishing gears and methods. So we actually putting it into practice now. Okay, and so far how are the um, children taking it? They are very excited as you can see. We have it in, we split them up into two teams, so we kind of have a little competition going, so they're excited about it. Meanwhile, two of the participants highlighted what they have learned so far from the program. I learned how to feather fish and basically how to clean a fish because I never knew, knew how to clean a fish, so that is something new. And I also learned the areas that are reserved that you can go fish in and the open and closed months because I, uh, I also heard about them but I don't know which specific month, so I also learned that. Alright, you caught anything today? No, and this is my sixth try and I didn't catch nothing as yet, but you cannot be discouraged because if the fishermen inside they were discouraged, I don't think would have any fish to eat, so I'm trying again. Alright, so you think possibly in the future you might want to um, take up one of the jobs involved in the entire fishery sector? There may be a possibility, but I'm not sure yet because I haven't decided my career as yet. So I'm just in the, in the world just discovering new things that I can approach to be my career. Alright, but so far given any program, you know, the fishery seem more exciting to you now? So far, yeah. Well, I learned the importance of the forest, right, to the ocean as well. Um, how important the corals are to the sea life, right? And if we have a healthy forest, healthy ocean, yeah. Okay, and so we're out here today fishing. Uh, have you caught anything? Yeah, I actually caught two little fish. Yeah. All right, and that you know makes you excited, more excited about the fishery sector. Uh, yeah, actually, um, one of my expectations for here, what I expected to learn from here, would be marine biology. And when I heard they had a bio bio lab, I was really excited. But we didn't get to go there yet. But just throwing the line out, know, it's pretty fun as well. Okay, and um, as you said, you're interested in marine biology. Um, it's my interest. Um, I'm actually hoping to become a scientist. Infectious disease specialist Dr. Josie Davy has warned that HIV is not the only sexually transmitted disease which persons should worry about, as there are other STDs which can have serious implications on life and fertility. In a recent interview with SVG TV News, Dr. Davies said chlamydia is one of the diseases on the rise here in SVG and highlighted some of the dangers it poses. It's an STI. We say STI because you may have the infection and not show the disease. 80% of women can have chlamydia and not show a sign or symptom. For those who have symptoms, it's usually a discharge from the vagina. It's usually creamish, yellowish. 
they may have some pelvic pain, irritation in the cervix, so sex might be painful. The problem with chlamydia is if left untreated, it can cause scarring of your fallopian tube and lead to something that we call pelvic inflammatory disease. And if that is left untreated, you can end up with abscesses in your tummy and peritonitis and ultimately this infection can spread and it can kill you. It's also implicated in atopic pregnancies because after scarring of the fallopian tube, then nothing passes and, and fertilized egg might get stuck up there and not be able to descend into the womb properly. Rescued, Reclaimed, Redeemed. The story of Leon Cornwall is the title of a public forum to be hosted here this Saturday at French's house by the Methodist Church. Cornwall is a former member of the People's Revolutionary Government of Grenada, the PRG, and currently prison councillor with the government of Grenada. A news release from the Methodist Church states that after three years of his imprisonment, Cornwall was led to the recall that was led to recall and reflect on his early Christian upbringing and thereafter experienced a strong inner sense of relief and joy that he immediately understood to be the beginning of a new and fresh experience with God. During his imprisonment, he studied theology through the external program of the University of London, obtaining a bachelor's degree. He is an accredited lay preacher of the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and Americas. Conwell currently chairs the Grenada Circuit Mission and Evangelism Committee of the Methodist Church and conducts regular open-air evangelistic services in the Grenada Circuit. Saturday's forum will begin at 5 p.m. at French's house.